Hey y'all, Biohack here. I am so excited for today's video. In this video, I am going to show you how to solo Sand Devil Stage 25 using the latest Fusion Champion Blizzard the Howler and the five-star Brimstone Blessing that is currently available through the Hero's Path event in the game. Um, I spent a lot of resources to pick this up. I've been going really hard trying to get it done so I could make this video for you guys before the event actually ends. You've got one day and 10 hours at the time of this recording to get it done. And honestly, this blessing is an absolute game changer for this champion for this purpose. When he originally came out, I was kind of like, okay, whatever, he's going to be good progression. But I, I didn't think he would really be that useful on my account. I was like, sort of, you know, whatever. Uh, however, when you get the brimstone blessing, it opens up an entirely new possibility to use use him in the sand devil's necropolis and that's because when you get five star on brimstone it becomes a protected smite debuff that goes out um, and what that means is that the boss's a2 will no longer clear the blessing which means uh, he's actually going to be able to keep it up and deal a lot of damage to the boss with that blessing, which is amazing because he's got this perfect passive right here to take care of the boss. So in this video, I'm going to go through basically how all this works, what sort of builds you need, what sort of masteries and all that kind of stuff. However, before we do that, I would really, really appreciate it if you guys would scroll down and subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Um, I would love to be able to make content like this someday before the fusion on the test server rather than after the fusion is already done when I have to dump a bunch of resources in it and it's far less useful to you guys because maybe some of you would have changed your mind about whether or not to go with this fusion if you had known this kind of information ahead of time. So without further ado, um, once you click that button, let's go ahead and jump into the rest of this video. Okay, first things first, um, let's go over his kit real quick. Honestly, the vast majority of it doesn't matter, but it's worth just talking about it. Uh, on his A1, he has an attacks three times at random. Each hit has a 40% chance, books to 50% chance of placing a freeze. This pretty makes him pretty nice for things like Hard Fire Knight and stuff. Um, I wouldn't use him in my Hard Fire Knight 10 team because it's not consistent, but you could use him in stuff in the city of Centranos, uh, and he's going to be really strong there for a lot of stuff. So it's a good A1. One, um, but not necessary for this content. Um, his A2 is a cleanse of all like CC style abilities, stun, sleep, fear, true fear, provoke, all that kind of stuff. Also puts up an increased defense and an ally protection for two turns. It books to a three turn cooldown. I will mention I have none of the abilities on this champion books. He needs no books to do this job. You can put books into him if you want, but um, you don't need them. Uh, his A3 ability here is pretty nice as well, but we need to turn it off for the boss. It attacks all enemies, has a books to 100% chance of placing a freeze debuff for one turn, and also decreases their turn meter by 30%. This is very nice for progression, for waves, stuff like that. If you're um, moving through the game, um, you can get a lot of value out of this. Uh, for endgame, it's not super useful because you have other options, but City of Centranos, it will definitely show up there. Really, the only skill that actually matters for what we're going to be doing today is this power Passive right here. It's um, well, he's immune to phrase and he'll reflect it, but that's not what we care about. What we care about is right down here. Whenever this champion is killed, revives them with 30% HP, 30% turn meter, and places a revive on death buff them, a buff on them for one turn. Of course, if you know Sand Devil, you know one of the main mechanics of that boss is it basically has a super, super hard hitting nuke that is almost guaranteed to kill your team. And then you kind of use this Phoenix style where you pop back up alive and you, you oftentimes you use like a god seeker who will then revive someone and deal damage and that kind of thing but basically getting killed and reviving is a super in part big part of the sand devil boss and blizzard is one of the only he might be the only legendary champion i think that has this ability that will work with no one else on the team chronam can do it if jamarsa is on the same team but um i think blizzard is the only one that can do it all by himself with no one else on the team but obviously, like Wukong can do it, too, but he needs other teammates alive in order for that to happen. OK, so that's it. This is what we need. Um, it's on a four turn cooldown. That is totally fine in the uh, how many turns he's going to take between every big nuke sort of alternates between six and four based on whether he a twos or a ones the boss twice or whether he a twos and then a ones the boss. Um, but even on a four turn cooldown, it's going to be totally fine. That's more than enough. Really? 
what the most important part of the kit is is what we talked about earlier is this five a uh, star um brimstone blessing which is going to put up the protected smite debuff that is how we actually deal the damage to the boss the rest of this doesn't really matter but that's his kit it's good to know okay so next thing you need to know is the way the boss mechanics work is every time the boss takes a turn he decreases your max hp by 10 percent however this does not apply on weak hits and blizzard is positive affinity to the boss so the boss will weak hit him um but What's going to happen then is when the boss then does his big nuke, he goes to sleep for two turns. Any healing you do while the boss is asleep will recover your max HP. And so the way we basically deal with the boss is the boss nukes you down, he goes to sleep, and we need to take two turns while the boss is sleeping, wearing both a regeneration and an immortal set to get as much healing as we possibly can during those two turns to recover our max HP. So, um, these sets are basically required. I, I would not recommend anything other than Immortal and Regen. You need to have both of them in order for it to work. Maybe there's some world where you're like an insane Kraken with like the most gnarly gear ever and you can get away with something other than Immortal, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, it's not going to work. Uh, definitely, you need both regen and immortal uh, for almost everyone. Okay, um, so that's the the build uh, in terms of the stats that you need. So I have him very, very tanky. As uh, like tankiness is going to be the main thing that we need, but we also need enough accuracy to land the brimstone blessing until we can get it to six star, um, or unless you have a six star. So uh, here I have him with eighty thousand health and four thousand one hundred ninety three defense, five hundred twenty three accuracy. Those are the defensive stats and the accuracy. The other stat that we need is speed. So I mentioned that he needs to take two turns while the boss is sleeping. The boss is going to nuke him. He's going to revive with 30% turn meter, and then he needs to take two turns before the boss goes uh, two more times, basically. The speed that you need to hit that is about 234, I think. Um, so you'll notice I only have 219 here. That's because we went ahead and took the Spirit Haste Blessing. We are going to have a bunch of food that dies, so we're going to get the extra 24 speed from the Blessing. So once that's kicked in, I should be about 240, what, 243 speed in this build. Um, I could drop this. I could drop him to about 210, and I think it should still work fine. But but um, I just gave him a little bit of extra buffer because why not? Let's just be safe. Uh, but that's it. You need tankiness. You need at least 210, maybe a little bit more speed. And you need enough accuracy to land the brimstone at 523. Okay, so there's two options for how you build him on the masteries, and this can make a big, big difference for how difficult it is going to be to gear him. There is the offensive build I'm showing here, which is going to be... Um, a lot harder to keep alive, but you're going to get the benefit of having the War Master procs. Um, War Master only really hits the boss for about 7,000 damage because the boss uh, decreases damage by 90% while he's... Um uh, doesn't have any debuffs or on him. Uh, so it's not like you're getting a ton of value out of this, but it might be useful in other content you might want to use them in or whatever. Um, but that's the idea. You need, um, you can run with War Master, and what it would look like is essentially just a generic damage masteries. I would recommend Life Jinker. It's kind of nice to get a little bit extra healing while the boss is asleep. Um, the rest of this stuff is just kind of sort of generic damage masteries on the A1. It, it's not that important. War Master is where he's going to do most of the damage due to the way the boss's mechanics work. Um, the support tree is very important, though. We do need to get these blessings that affect our healing. In particular, Lay on Hands increases the value of this champion's heal cast by 5%. And um, we also have Healing Savior here, where the shields and healing um, go up by 10%. If the ally is 40% HP or less, he will revive with 30% um, HP, so that should go into effect. Merciful Age shouldn't really matter. I specifically avoided Cycle of Magic. Um, if all you are going to do is use him for this, you could use Cycle of Magic, but it doesn't really matter. It's not his abilities aren't what's important. It's all about the brimstone blessing. So if you want to, you could run cycle of magic. I specifically left it off because I don't want to have to deal with it. If I run him in Amius uh, in the city of Centranos, he could be a very good champion for that, um, especially because of the, the five star brimstone blessing. That's really, really nice for that boss. But 
the cycle of magic just makes it hard so i figured if, since we're not getting any benefit out of it we'll keep it off the spirit haste blessing is really important like i mentioned uh sniper i do believe increases the probability of applying the brimstone i'm pretty sure that is the case so um this is nice to boost that from 60 percent to 65 percent, and those are the masteries if you struggle to keep him alive um go skip this tree and go in the defensive tree um and i here i can show you what that is going to look like kind of for my god seeker and neary who i was using before i got this champion for this um the main blessings you care about here the blast proof decreases the damage from aoe attacks by five percent that's really nice um the rejuvenation here is really really helpful for recovering the max hp so one of the things that this boss does is um like I mentioned, he decreases your max HP by 10% every time he takes a turn. If he does, if he weaks hits, he won't do that. So because Blizzard is positive affinity to the boss, he will take weak hits from time to time. And then that will basically stop the... Um, max hp from getting destroyed and so then you hopefully will then just recover it later on however if you get bad rng and he never gets any weak hits you need enough of a buffer to make sure that um you can get around enough time so that eventually he'll get enough weak hits that you can recover your max hp so if you're struggling to keep him alive ditch the offensive tree come down and pick up rejuvenation here to boost the healing and what that will do is it will make sure that he will never have any issues with his max hp getting destroyed so if you're noticing that he's dying and that his max hp is ticking down as the fight goes longer Come over, swap the out the offensive blessing, pick up this one here in defense, and you'll be fine. The rest of this stuff is nice. Shadow heal is nice because the boss does heal himself on his A2, so you'll get some extra healing there. Um, this stuff just reduces damage. Um, again, reducing damage. Uh, oh, wait, no, this is removing debuffs. Uh, this doesn't really matter. Um, this reduces damage. Uh, you could go for retribution, counterattack. It doesn't, and none of this uh, bottom row stuff really is going to make any difference. The counterattacks hit for like nothing. I don't think cycle of revenge really matters either. You could pick that up if you wanted to. Um, if you decide not to go to the offensive tree here, I, um, on this God seeker, I took elixir of life. I wouldn't recommend that actually, if I was, um, running blizzard, I would gum and grab the sniper again. And then you could pick up the eagle eye mastery to get the extra 50 accuracy, Godseeker doesn't need accuracy, so she doesn't care, but the extra 50 accuracy would be really nice on Blizzard to help you get enough stats. So if you don't have good enough gear, come down and build a, a tree very much like this, except for instead of um, coming here, just swap this out, go here and here. Uh, and yeah, that's the masteries. Um, pretty straightforward, uh, but again, it's all about boosting that healing to make sure you're recovering the max HP. Oh, one more thing on the blessings I forgot to talk about. Um, oh, first off, let me move my camera. There you go. I, I was watching my recording and I realized I didn't show you that. Okay, there you go. Um, don't take Giant Slayer. The reason you don't want to take Giant Slayer is because if the boss A1s, he hits, or not the boss, if Blizzard A1s and he hits the boss three times, if all of those abilities proc Giant Slayer, you're going to wake the boss up after a single attack and that is going to mess you up um, pretty bad because you're not going to get the two cycles of the boss sleeping to help recover the max HP. So you can't take Giant Slayer, even though he's a three hitter A1 and you would otherwise probably want to take Giant Slayer. Don't take Giant Slayer um, because you could wake the boss up early. War Master is what you want to go for if that's uh, what you're interested in. Okay. Um, okay. So the next thing we want to talk about is the presets. I mean, they're very easy. Um, we'll just jump down over here. You do have to run this on presets. So the main thing, all you have to do is just turn off the A3 ability. A3 ability decreases turn meter. Uh, when you decrease the turn meter, it decreases your max HP. So you cannot decrease the boss's turn meter or you will completely just brick your run. So we have to turn that off. The rest of it doesn't matter. Um, I leave cryotherapy on. If you want to, um, I will mention... Uh, the, the only place I think I would ever want to do this is if you have a six star blessing. If you turn off the A2, he's going to A1 the boss twice every time the boss is asleep. And what that means is it's going to wake the boss up the second time that he does it. And when that happens, it means that the boss and Blizzard are going to run. Blizzard is basically going to run on a four turn cycle with the boss's nuke. So if you A2 twice and wake the boss up every time, you're running on a four turn 
turn cycle. If we go back and we look at the Brimstone Blessing, it has a four turn cooldown. And if you get it to six stars, it is a 100% chance to land, and you don't need uh, accuracy or anything. So if you have a six-star Blizzard, you could turn off the A2 and just A1 every single time, and then you would always wake the boss up, and you would always run on a four-turn cooldown, and because it's a 100% chance to protect it or place on a six-star, you would always place it. So that would be the way to get the most damage and get the run done as quick as possible. However, when you're running only on a four-turn cooldown, uh, it is a little bit tougher to keep him alive it can work for sure um or sorry a four turn cycle but it means you're essentially missing out on two potential turns to recover your max hp or your not your max hp but to recover your hp while the boss is attacking you so he needs to be tanky enough to make sure that he can survive that um when i tried to turn off the a2 uh with only a five star blessing i found that it actually slowed down the run a lot and it can run into this weird cycle where if it doesn't place on the first one um it'll start trying to place it when the boss is awake and it will very consistently keep trying to place it while the boss is awake and you'll have to wait for those 60 percent chances to fail over and over and over again until it gets back into the cycle where then it will start placing every time again so it's not really worth it keep the a2 on if you only have a five star blessing if you have a six star blessing maybe consider turning the a2 off if you're going for the fastest speed possible but that's it um that's the that's the presets turn off the a3 leave everything else alone Again, he doesn't need any books or anything. This kind of stuff doesn't matter. Um, like I said, he will alternate between taking four turns or six turns, depending on whether or not he uses the A2 while the boss is asleep. All right, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the runs. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you um, show you a run I already recorded. I've, I've run this probably like 10 times or so, 10, 15 times. The fastest runs are about three minutes, and um, usually they're probably around three and a half minutes or so, which is actually faster than the Godseeker plus HP burn team that I was using before. So this is kind of nice, because it's actually a speed up for me in addition to the fact that um, it's uh, I can bring in an extra piece of food. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, enjoy this run, and uh, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.